we are live. Excellent. Good afternoon, everyone. Happy Friday, Shabbat Shalom. Happy Anything Goes Friday. <laughs> it is another week of Anything Goes. Great to be with you, Eric. This week was such a, a combination of went by really fast and dragged at parts of it. So <laughs> <laughs> I can't believe it's Friday, but it was such a such an emotional week, I guess, a exhausting week. Yeah. It's definitely been a week of uncertainty for a lot of us. Um, I know that I have spent a lot of time watching the news and trying to follow what's going on um, for our country. And hopefully we will come to some kind of clear resolution, a fair resolution um, soon. And peaceful resolution. So Absolutely. You know, it's, it was such a concern that with the elections, no matter what the decision was, that there was going to be unrest and unhappiness. And, and uh, personally, it's such a relief that things, at least locally, stayed have stayed calm. Right. May that be the case as we move <laughs> into the coming days. Yeah. yeah. Again, welcome to everyone who's just signing on. We're really glad you're here. Feel free to say hello in the comments so we can greet you. Hi, Jay. Shabbat Shalom. Glad you're back. We missed you last week, Jay. <laughs> Hopefully you, you, you went back and watched the replay, Jay. <laughs> and Eric, we've had so much fun over these weeks getting to know our congregants. It's been such so, just so much fun to meet with people that we have known but maybe not known super well or people that we thought we know really well um, and get to know them better. And that's been the big surprise for me is just where where our conversations go, right? right. Uh, when, when speaking with someone, it's you know, seeing a whole different way to relate that you relate to someone or or um, having a conversation and then and then almost where we feel like we're running out of time. We we want more time. We want to bring right. just because you just start you just start hitting on that bit of a the subject that. Wow, that's fascinating. I, I want to know more about that. Right. Yeah, and I've got a number of emails after this program saying like, you know, oh, I can't wait to meet that person when we get back to the temple. Like I want to continue the discussion. So we're hoping that all of you who are watching are enjoying getting to know members of our community. Again, if you have any recommendations of future guests, we'd love to hear them. A lot of our recent guests have come from your suggestions. That's right. Absolutely true. I think the, the last few guests we've had have all been people we've been emailed about and said, hey, how about this person? Yeah. So keep those coming. Uh, <laughs> next week, we have, can we announce who our yeah. next guest? Yeah. So next week, uh, Kendra and Barry Cogert are joining. Uh, and uh, then we're having a couple weeks off until December because we have the the local, the, the challah bake, the pink challah bake, I believe is happening. Um, in, yeah, in partnership with Star Sharet. Mm -hmm. And then after that is Thanksgiving weekend. So we're going to take the last two weekends of, of uh, November off and we'll so get those uh, recommendations to us and suggestions to us so that we can put together a full December lineup uh, for everybody. Yeah. Take us out 2020 with a bang. <laughs> Oh, 2020. We love you. <laughs> there are so many appropriate memes I've seen related to, you know, or, or just graphic pictures of how many people are ready for 2020 for so many reasons to be over. Um, and, uh, it's too bad because it had kind of an exciting ring to it. I think everyone was like, oh, 2020, it sounds fun, you know, like a milestone year or something. Little did we know. Yeah. So it's been um, another busy week at Temple Israel, and we're looking forward to a great weekend ahead. Um, we know everyone's been had the backdrop of the election, but we've also had some other programs that have been going on. And um, this, this, um, this weekend is particularly busy. We've got our kindergarten through third grade Shabbat tonight, which should be really fun. And it'll be our first grade level Shabbat. Um, so we're trying out some new things, you know, ways to get our kids participating in the service. I'm excited for that. Um, and then we've got a seventh grade 
family program tomorrow night before Havdala, and then Sunday we have Torah Center, and Sunday afternoon we have our kindergarten consecration, which should be lots of fun. It's going to be actually in person at the temple, rain or shine. So well, wow. so it is. It's a it's a busy weekend for especially for our families and for families with kids and young kids, new 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 faces in our Torah Center. Kids just starting out and, and starting on the process of their Jewish education or, or the, the starting of starting over. It's different. The learning Hebrew is that's different, right? That's the what ceremony is that? Right. They start that in third grade. It's typically called our Gesher Le'ivrit, a bridge to Hebrew. So we'll be celebrating uh, with our third graders a little bit tonight and then we'll be sending them their certificates um, probably next week. So, yeah. do they get the little Torahs? Is that the thing? Yes, they do. The little Torahs are um, ready to go at the temple, and we'll be giving those out on Sunday to all of our kids. I, I know our so many of our so many of our kids still have their little Torahs that they that they were given for for consecration. Right. I think so many of our adults have them. Do any of right. you have them? <laughs> Let us know in the comments. <laughs> I just have to acknowledge um, um, Steve Gordon's watching with us today. And he says, it's actually been a great year. Both the Dodgers and the Lakers won their world championships. So yes, 2020 has had its silver linings for sure. Especially for LA sports fans. Right, right. I think, I think for many of us, actually, those two things have, have been the, the, the driving force to keep us uh, energized and sane and... Uh, <laughs> Having us having something to, to root for and, and to make the days pass. So. Right, right. I feel like I went from watching <laughs> baseball, like baseball on, you know, with no end, um, to now watching the news without an end. So um, I think there probably were a few days break, <laughs> but not much. <laughs> <laughs> not much. It, it, it did pretty much go straight from the NBA finals to the World Series, or at least the playoffs, um, and now uh, election results. So yeah. The the last few weeks have been pretty insane. <laughs> and for those who uh, have also been, uh, I don't want to say suffering, but sort of, you know, uh, stressed this week, right, as far as whatever the results are going to be. Uh, I know um, Rabbi Fox and Kenner Haas are going to be leading a, a unity service um tonight before our regular scheduled shabbat service so that's going to start at 5 15 right pretty much right after our show yep and, and just giving a chance for for people to decompress come together um remember that we're a community and and um be able to put the 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 differences of politics aside and really Again, remember, remember why we are Temple Israel, what is what it means to be part of our community, the Jewish community of Long Beach. Um, it, it's so much more than than who's the president or what party is is leading. It's really about how we help and, and interact with one another. Right. Yeah, I know that Cantor Haas and Abbey Fox have played a really beautiful service, um, some really pretty music and readings. So we do encourage everyone to take a quick break and then come back on at 5.15 to join us for that service, followed by our regular Shabbat service at six o'clock, which will be featuring our kindergarten through third grade families. And that'll be that'll be fun and, and great to have, have those kids in our, in our service and participating. So yeah, that. good, a little, a little distraction for sure. Yeah. Uh, and then for those who have wanted to keep busy during the week and keep distracted, we we the, uh, the rabbi started his Taste of Judaism class this week. So for those who uh, are, are learning to brush up, wanting to brush up on their Judaism, or if you, uh, for people in the community who are thinking about conversion or just wanting to be exposed to, to more of their, their Jewish heritage, um, that started and that's a three week course. It's going on for another couple of weeks. I think even if you missed the first week, you can you can join in for the last two. Yeah, it's also a great way to you know get to know Rabbi Fox a little bit better uh, in a small group. So feel free to to join in. Yeah, week. and I know we have we've had a few people sign up just for that very reason. Mm -hmm. It's another opportunity to hear from our rabbi. 
Um, and then Tara led a cooking class last night, right? She so. did. She did a really cooking class. Kind of a small turnout, but they um, um, butternut squash soup was on the menu. So if you're interested in butternut there. squash soup or really any cooking recommendations, Kara Liu, our youth director, is a wonderful resource. And for me, vegetarian things, because a lot of times she'll use things straight from her garden. Although mm -hmm. I know right. she's at home right now, but I'm sure it was, I'm sure <laughs> everything was still fresh and farm fresh and right. <laughs> yeah, and we did send out that email last week, I think it was called Zoom into no, uh, November's Adult Education Opportunities. So be sure to take a look at that, all the adult ed things that are coming up throughout the month of November, have all the Zoom links on there. And um, I'm especially excited about this Sunday's program with Danny Ehrlich at 12.30 p.m. Danny Ehrlich is actually in Israel, and he's the person who helped plan and lead our congregational Israel trips over the past number of years. He's been in Long Beach a few times too, so some of you may have met him when he's been at Temple Israel, or maybe you were on one of our Israel trips. So he'll be leading a kind of a, a virtual tour slash teaching about Jerusalem history. So it should be really interesting. And, and I know everybody who has participated uh, when Danny has either been present or things that just have really enjoyed his teaching and, and uh, what he's been able to bring to the table. So yeah. a lot of people, we had an uh, Israel experience. Do we have a, 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 an, an experience Israel committee or task force? Yeah, task force. Mm -hmm. so, so hopefully they'll they'll be supportive and they'll come on and, and watch uh, and watch Danny this weekend. Yeah, be great. He's actually going to be zooming from Israel. I didn't know that. So he's actually. Yeah. All right. Yeah, it'll be you know late at night there, but um, perfect time for us. <laughs> yeah, I was gonna say that we must have there must have been a lot of planning for that just so that <laughs> he's not he's not zooming in the middle of the night for our for our. Right. Event. It's been a really cool thing for the JJL program this year that we've been able to do things via Zoom, and have some teachers who live either out of state or out of country, um, who can still join us remote. Uh, it's been really great. We have a scholar in residence from Georgetown University and she'll be joining us in April. Again, totally virtually. It open, opens up a lot of doors when you can just do things online. Yeah, and I think it's some things that we can continue, right? Hopefully, I know we're all looking forward to, again, coming back in the building and doing things in person, um, but after what's gonna look like almost a year of, of this, I think we're all gonna be comfortable with it. We're all gonna be able to, to embrace the uh, different, different ways that we're able to to learn from each other and and communicate so much absolutely absolutely well, Eric, we do have a lot of people who are, have joined us um so shabbat shalom to, to judy blumenthal and carol masters to bobby horowitz and jay Iser, to dan watson hi everyone we're so glad you're here again feel free to comment in the facebook chat as we're going along if long if you have questions for our guest linda kyles feel free to put, put them in there and we will be sure to ask them throughout the interview We'll bring Lynn on in just a minute. Um, I know the other things we have going on this week. Um, you know, we have our, our typical, our men's minion group meets every week. This year, uh, this week, I mean, our um, we have our Musar study group that that is meeting with Trish Golden. Yeah. And the women's book club is also meeting this week. So uh, we've sent out a ton of emails and and uh, <laughs> and our bulletin and everything else. So so hopefully people are getting the information. Um, and uh, can read up on things and know how to participate. If not, you can always call the Temple office. Um, if you don't have a link or if you lost an email, we'll make sure to send that out. Um, and the last bit of exciting news that I want to give people, some people actually may already have access to it, um, but, I, um, but, I, but I know we don't have access in the office yet, which is really weird. So we haven't sent out an email that, that's announcing it, but for you, for those online, for those on Facebook, you're getting the first announcement that our website da, 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 is actually up. So Yay. if you go to, to uh, TILB.org, it may at this point, there's still a conversion process that has to go out um, or it's in the process of going out. So some people have seen our new website, some have not, but, but um, I think by Monday, on Monday we'll send out a formal announcement 
of our new website and uh, really encourage everyone to go take a look. Um, it's really exciting for, for all of us who have worked on it. Uh, it's really a credit to a great committee led by Alan Lillian. Um, and uh, it, it should be so much more functional and usable for, for, for our members and uh, really shows the temple in a great light. So, um, Yeah, I think it really reflects who we are as a community. I'm, I'm super excited about it too. Uh, and actually, uh, I think one of the pictures on our homepage actually has Linda Kyles in it. So um, <laughs> that's very fitting. Uh, but yeah, take a look at it, everybody. We'd love to hear what you think. We realize there may be some little tweaks to make here and there. So feel free to pass those along to us too. But um, it is a really big development for Temple Israel and a long time in coming. So with that, should we bring on? Linda? Yeah, let's do it. All right. And she comes. Everybody, we love you. There she is. Hi, Linda. Hi, Hi. Linda. <laughs> Welcome to Anything Goes. And, and, and on to Zoom at the same time. <laughs> the Bachelor. Hi. The Welcome bachelor. to Anything Goes. We're so glad you're here. I am delighted to be here. No place I'd rather be. <laughs> And you look like uh, you're in a, in a great workspace. You have a lot of, a lot of uh, is that your home office? This is my home office. You know, I, I, I'm one of the, the, the fortunate people in the sense that I've been working from home for like five and a half years. So I was kind of set up to be able to just, you know, keep going. It wasn't a big change for me. And I mm -hmm. even knew where most of the buttons were on Zoom. So <laughs> it's kind of handy. <laughs> It's so good. yeah, I mean, the fact I, that, I, I, go ahead. <laughs> no, I was just going to say that you know that easy transitions are a good thing. Um, I think and we're, you know, and it's, and it's a fitting uh, a fitting thing for t today also that we're all hoping for easy transitions, right? That, easy transitions, yes. Yeah, some things are easier than others for sure. But yeah, you know, it's 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 been a very interesting. Um, just thinking back to March when we all thought, yeah, this is gonna be for a little bit of time and we'll all you know, be back wherever we are. And then you know, the, the funniest thing that really tells me how long things have been going on is that we had to call AAA twice in the last week for my car because my it battery driven. died. <laughs> and it hadn't been driven. Apparently you're supposed to drive the car and the newer cars. I mean, mine's like three or four years old, but they have all these computers that are always on and draining battery. So um, it, I went out to the car one day and it just, the air conditioner didn't work. And I th thought, okay, air conditioner doesn't work. I'm sure that's, I don't know what that is. Next time I go out, I <laughs> you know, press the button and it just goes click, 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 click. So Leslie, my wife called AAA and they came out and recharged the battery and they told us, you know, just get in and, you know, every it started and let it, I don't know whether we actually did that or not. I was, it was right before the application deadline for college stuff that I work with. Uh, next time I go out, not even a click, dead, <laughs> new battery, and so I learned a lesson. You do have to start your car and even drive it. We're going to backtrack a little this is bit my because pandemic lesson. for those for those at home, we're gonna, I want to give you. I want to introduce who you are. Um, so um, I thought I might have missed that part. No, you know what? It, it, it's for everyone who for everyone who's watching. Linda is just so easy to talk to, and 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 Sharon and I. So, so it just makes it, it makes it easy and just kind of jump right into it. But, but we really want to make sure that for those at home, um, I give you your proper introduction and then we can, uh, we can talk further. So um, Linda Kyles and her wife, Leslie Saletti, raised their four children at Temple Israel. And Linda started her sixth year of teaching middle schoolers at the Torah Center. Before that, she spent almost 17 years working at the Barbara and Ray Alper JCC, serving as the director of many different departments and programs over the years, including Camp Kamaroff, Kids University, and Early Childhood Education. And for the past five years, Linda has shifted gears to start her own business, Kyle's College Consulting, 
uh, helping students in Long Beach, Los Alamitos, and beyond to achieve their college dreams. She is proud to be a member of Tem Temple Israel for over 20 years and looks forward to the next 20 years and then some. Welcome. Now, Yay. thank you. <laughs> I'm very, very happy. <laughs> if, we had a, if we had a band, they'd probably be playing some. So maybe I should come on next week with Kendra and Barry. Right, they'll be the band. Can play me. <laughs> we can, we're, I think Sharon and I are going to be plugging for a, a, an actual budget for this show so that we can get some sound effects and get a soundboard and, and have some things. Yeah, green screen and maybe we can do some from the outer space stuff. All right, it's going to expand, you know, instead of just for this one, for this hour on Fridays, I think, you know, we'll, we'll just... Fridays will be ours, Sharon. We'll just we'll just take over Fridays and we'll do we'll do a variety show. We'll do interviews. We'll do stand up. Sounds great. I Sounds think great. that's fantastic. There's, there, <laughs> we don't have enough channels and and ways to get entertained now anyway. Right. <laughs> <laughs> so, Linda, how are you? First of all, that's that's the the question we like to ask first. Is how are you doing? How how is how are you? How is your family? How's, how's Leslie? Everybody's, we're okay. We're good. Uh, I, um, it, Leslie's in the other room watching and I told you just keep the sound down. We can't have echoes. Um, we, the kids are spread out in different places. We have a 27 year old in San Diego, a 25 year, I think 25 or 24 year old in Colorado. We have a couple of kids in Long Beach. You know, we're all over the place, but knock wood, everybody's healthy and, you know, kind of getting through this time and doing, doing their own thing. So um, it's, it's business has been really busy for me, which is wonderful. Um, and I was actually really happy to get past, I help kids um, with college applications and, you know, there, it's very much a time ordered kind of thing. I mean, you know, November 1st is an early deadline and then you've got a bunch of applications due the 15th and 30th. So I took a few days after the first because it, it just gets so crazy before. Mm -hmm. And and of course my three days that I took off were the day before election day, <laughs> election day and the next day. So <laughs> I wouldn't say I've been relaxing, but I'm here and I'm happy and teaching at seventh grade and um, no complaints at all. Great, great. Now, Linda, so many of us have known you as part of the Long Beach Jewish community for a long time. Um, we've known each other for 21 years now, Eric, for the past uh, 11 or so years, or maybe 10 years or something. Um, so, you know, we certainly have known you as, as a community leader within the Jewish community. Um, can you tell our audience a little bit about what you did before you were involved with the Jewish community so heavily and then kind of what led you to, to uh, join, join the ranks of the Jewish professional? Oh, that, it takes, a, I have to really go back. Um, I, I've been living in California for just over 30 years. And when I first came in 1987, I actually got an emergency teaching credential <clears throat> and I taught in um, LA Unified um, elementary schools for about six years. And um, I had my, my son, Josh, who's the 27 year old in 1993 and stopped teaching and found within a pretty short period of time that I needed to do something. So I started working, I started like teaching little um, in, in after school programs and doing writing classes and things like that and, and started going to the JCC as a parent um, when I had my second child. And that's how I wandered myself and wandered my way into the Jewish community. You know, I, growing up in New York, it was really easy to I grew up on Long Island. It was easy to kind of be Jewish without doing Jewish, if that makes mm -hmm. sense. Sure. Until I came to Long Beach, I had never been to a Shabbat dinner. I'd never heard <laughs> of a Shabbat dinner. And I grew up Jewish. It was just, you know, you just kind of, you were. 
uh-huh. at, at least in, you know where I grew up and the way I grew up. And um, so I kind of found my Jewish self at the JCC and then right after that at Temple Israel. When you said 21 years that you and I have known each other, that's like insane. It is pretty <laughs> insane, I know. It really is. But I think, you know, for me, the Jewish part has been about community. You know, it, it's, I would not say I'm the most observant. I'm not the most, you know, I don't know exactly where the Shabbat candlesticks are in the house, let alone the Havdalah candlestick, <laughs> but I feel very connected to our community. And, and just in general, I feel that, that Jewishness. Um, and I, you know, it's funny, I was telling Leslie that in some ways, through all of this, since March, I feel even more connected. I've been to more services <laughs> online uh-huh. because, you know, I don't live right around the corner from, from the temple. Uh-huh. And so sometimes the barrier is, hey, I have to get in my car, I have to drive there. But I love the accessibility of this. So I've done more Havdalahs and more, more of everything. And there's an intimacy that, that, that has been offered that I'm just, I've been really happy with that. I feel very, very connected. Yeah, I there's something to be that, said. I to tell you. <laughs> yeah, I mean, the fact that our services and these programs are not formal and in the sanctuary and sort of just a video from a distance, but are this connection, you know, this close connection is is a positive, right? It's a positive, I think. And, and in a time when we've all been looking to or wanting that connection, um, I, I agree. I mean, you know, in, in, like you, I've, I've been working in the Jewish community, but my, my connection is, is actually community and, and, and um, uh, although I'm knowledgeable of ritual and, and what have you, but um, being able to, to do more Havdalahs and more services as a community. Uh, it, I know for me, it's been, it's been a, a good experience as well. And, and Yeah, I mean, you have to, you know, it's such a cliche to say that you have to make lemonade out of lemons, but listen, nobody saw, well, I don't want to get into nobody saw that there was going to be a pandemic. That's a whole different issue. But we certainly didn't see it and we didn't expect it. And We all started, you know, Torah Center last year. I go back to like last, you know, September of what the 2019 thinking, Mm -hmm. you know, here we are, we're all going to be doing the school year. Never would have thought that anything would be different from the way it always was. Right. And, you know, to have to kind of um, uh, change horses in midstream, so to speak, and and change the way you do everything. And and I think that it was done with a lot of um, grace and compassion and and understanding that the goal was to bring as many people to to make sure that people didn't have barriers to being able to be involved and and to, to make sure that people who needed help maybe with the technology were getting it. And I remember hearing something and it might have been or both that we didn't ever have going back too soon because we didn't want anybody to feel that they were going to miss something because they couldn't go so they might come to a live service or do something right that they sh- you know we weren't really ready to be doing and I just thought I love my temple <laughs> you know I just I love it really it really it really made me I've never questioned, I've never thought about not being part of Temple Israel. It's like from the minute I, I started, but it was just one of those things where it's like the humanity of it, you know, just, I'm getting a little verklempt. <laughs> <laughs> so my New York is coming out. <laughs> well, I know, you know, what a, what a wonderful addition you've been to our Taurus Center staff over these past seven years. Thank Linda you. is our seventh grade Judaica teacher and is really helping to escort our seventh grade students and their families through the B'nai Mitzvah experience and be really reflective on what this special time in their lives means. And um, and we're so grateful, Linda. I, I love it. I always, you know, felt, I think 
it, my strongest connection to my Judaism has been through kids. Mm-hmm. You know, first through my own kids, through the kids at the JCC and the camp and the, the, the teens who worked for me when I was running camp. And so when I left the J, that little piece was missing. But I think we had a meeting within, Sharon, what? Like, I think like within two weeks, <laughs> you said, hey, let's talk. <laughs> and it was, and it was like the shared, it was just, you know, it was a really smooth transition, which I'm not surprised, um, but it's, it's been a good fit. And I love middle school kids, um, especially on Zoom. <laughs> <It's>, <laughs> no, I, I, I do. I miss them. I wish, um, I wish I could see them and I, you know, I, I know I will, but um, it, it's, it's different, but you know, the occasional use of the mute button is not a bad thing, <laughs> but it, it's such, you know, I, I teach Holocaust studies and, and in my part of seventh grade Judaica, and I, I, um, it's, I've had to learn, I think like many of us had, have to learn to teach a little bit differently. And I think it's really working well because it's actually easier to show a video clip, to um, have certain interactions that, that are respectful and um, directed and archival to mm-hmm. be able to really show, we're, we're gonna be talking this week about Jewish life <clears throat> in, in Europe before the Holocaust. Yeah. And there's a fabulous film um, that, that I've used before but it's a little bit easier to share with the kids online. So, you know, I'm really enjoying some of the technology. I'm having fun. I like technology. I, one of the things that I did in, in that in-between board period, um, when I had Josh and I wasn't working, I went back to work on a master's in computer-based education that I never quite finished. I didn't but know I've always been interested in technology. And this was yeah, this was back when um, Max or like Little Square. I was going to say, was it, is it DOS programming or what? The, <laughs> no, it know? was Mac. Mac had the education market. Right, that's right. And that's it cool. was um, HyperCard. I don't know if anybody remembers HyperCard, but it was this little program with stick figures. And it was like, you know, all of the rage. And I was learning how to program, like, you know, things to make squares. And I, I liked it. But now, like the things you can do are really cool. So I'm not fun with that. The coding yeah, stuff the kids are doing you nowadays. Not know about it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, it's really, I, I, there's some great, I have a list that I keep, I don't know if you can see, kind of stuck onto my computer of all the different educational software type. There, It's not called software anymore. What is it called now? Um, websites and things you can mm-hmm. use to teach. From right. some of the training that we've had just to try different things and I, I really like it never too old to learn great you know it seems that um you know if you go back and, and look at your from all the different positions that you had at the jcc um uh, so you, you've always sort of been flexible i think in terms of what you're willing to do and what you're willing to try and and um and, and delve into um how, what what was the process of, of going into consulting and the how did you where, where was your leap from there as far as um, thinking oh I want to be I, this is what I want my new career to be after after being at the JCC yeah you know it, that's a very cool question when I when I left I kind of started doing um, an assessment of like the things that I liked and the things I thought I might be good at and the, the population that I enjoyed working with. And I, and I started to think about like what made me happy and what I could reasonably do. And I knew I liked writing and I knew I was a good editor because I had to do a lot of that in, at the J and in doing like, you know, advertising and things for um, marketing some of our programs. And I thought, oh, I'm pretty good at that. People would come to me and say, you know, hey, can you look over this? And I thought, okay, that, you know, put that in my bucket. I had all these um, files on my iPad, like, you know, what do I like? What am I good at? And I loved research. <laughs> and, and, and research was one of the things I went, oh, I like researching. I like writing and editing. And I love like emerging young adults. 
you know, I like that, <clears throat> that population. And then as I was starting to kind of think about all this, um, somebody approached or put up on Facebook, they asked me, do you know anybody who could help my daughter with her college essays? And I went, oh. <laughs> I could do that. And then I started to think, wait, there are people who do not just the essays, but the whole thing. In fact, we have a Temple member. Um, I, she was a member at that time, Nicole Gracie, who um, was, she has a company called University. And she helped my older son when he was getting ready for college. And I used to bring her to the J to do workshops. And I thought, oh, maybe I could do that. And I kind of like just brought everything together. And I started with that one kid whose, whose mom asked me and then, you know, picked up a kid here, a kid here, had a handful of kids. <clears throat> I think this was 2015. So the first year, I think I had like eight kids and I have like almost 40 now. Wow. And in fact, wow. I brought Eve Lunt on and Eve and I are working together and Eve does like the arts kids right now um, and helps with portfolios, but she's going to start taking on like, you know, all the kids. So we've been able to kind of grow and it's so much fun because even I met at, at the JCC in, I always say 1998 and she always says no, but you know, it's, <laughs> it's like, you know, we've known each other for but, at least 20 years and we've always worked together in some capacity and been friends so it's we know that we can work together really well and she's so incredibly talented and I don't know anything about art and so now it's like bringing in this whole other part of what we can do for kids portfolios and artist statements and you know I I, I know from stick figures so it, it's, it's, <laughs> it's really, really fun. And it's, it's a great um, sense of, you know, somebody having your back. It's not always easy to work by yourself. And, mm -hmm. you know, I think we're all in some ways feeling sometimes now like we're working by ourselves. And, and I think, you know, Sharon, we had our staff meeting last weekend and, mm -hmm. you know, there's always this little bit of longing, right? Like, right not just for the cookies and the things that Mel would always cook for. <laughs> we always did provide good food, I think, right? So. Really good food. I did miss that. But I miss being in the presence of people. You know, yeah. people have a, um, a warmth to them and a smell to them and a, a, a tactile. And, sure. and as much as I really do like the being able to look people in the eye, I miss being able to, you know, elbow somebody when something funny <laughs> happens or, you know, th those kind of things are hard. Right. And, you know, that's, that's a tough thing. So Linda, I don't remember so how the, that. yeah, so the student, I mean, so just people some who may not have a sense of what the college consulting world looks like. So you've got a, a, a student, you know, a junior or senior who comes to you. Um, can you give sort of a short description of like what you might like what you do with a, a teenager and how and why someone might come to you like i know yeah. when i was you know applying to college i just kind of did it myself but maybe um I know, here. so complicated um <laughs> you know i do now have have as as a lot of you know i have a freshman in college myself so i have a, a pretty you know pretty decent sense of now what it's like but Tell our audience a little bit about what, um, why a student might come to you and what a family would get from working with a consultant like, like yourself. Yeah, that's a, that's a great question. It's funny because I don't even know if, if the two of you are old enough to remember doing college applications with carbon paper. So you, you know, make sure you have a copy of which. <laughs> Sorry. Yeah, I'm, I'm definitely older, <laughs> but it's true. You know, when, when I applied to college and that was 40 years ago, um, you basically, you know, you applied to five or six colleges and you were going to get into, you know, most of them, depending on where you applied to. And you'd have you know, a couple of pages to your application. You'd get um, a catalog and, and that was pretty much it. And now there are so many more hoops to jump through um, and, and different kinds of online applications. And so 
what happens is um, a family will come to me and they want different things. So some people want me to take them from, as I always like to say, soup to nuts, which is probably also something that <laughs> I'm, I'm old enough to know what, you know. <laughs> and they'll say, you know, listen, we have no idea where to start. Um, you know, my, my, my child is a, a, a sophomore or a junior in high school. They don't know where they want to go. They don't know what they want to do. And, and I can do everything with them from looking for um, the career that they may want to go into or just kind of the field that they may want to go into to explore so that they can decide what they might want to major in, which could determine what school they're looking at. Uh -huh. um, some kids come in and they're a little bit more clear. I'm actually pretty happy when they're not because I don't necessarily think 15 and 16 year olds should have to know. I'm on my, I don't know, my fifth, you know, real career. And, and many of us do that. You know, that I'm not good with statistics, but <laughs> I think they talk about people having four, five, six, seven different segments in their, in their career life. Um, other than other than people who know from an early age that they're going to be a doctor, right? Or or you know it's either either those or or people who have this God given talent as right. an amazing right. musician or singer or where it's just that's the math, right? I have heard that people change jobs. Can't. I I, 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 I am well, well then, but, but I hear that people do it's that. True. Listen, I didn't. <laughs> you just. Yeah, I, I've heard that too, but please don't, neither one of you. <laughs> so yeah, I mean, what we do is we, you know, I, I talk a lot in, in, in other years, we talk a lot about visiting colleges and, and how to go about doing that. It's not so easy right now. So now I'm, I'm trying to help people do virtual visits. A lot of colleges have done a fabulous job in having lots of online options for visiting. So, you know, I try to help with those kind of things. Um, we talk a lot about, you know, extracurricular activities. And I always tell people, don't join a lot of clubs just because you feel like you need to fill up spaces on your application. I want kids to do things that they feel passionate about, um, that they really enjoy, that they want to be part of, not because they feel they should. One of the things that's been fascinating during this time period is the number of my students, seniors in particular, who've said to me, oh, I feel so relieved in some ways. I don't have to be at rehearsal, or especially in the beginning. I don't have to be at rehearsal and then violin lessons and then, you know, all of the different things that they have to do from 6 a.m. till 10 o'clock at night with their four hours of homework. Some of them have said to me, this is a relief. So, you know, I, it, no matter what I do with the students, I always tell them and I tell their parents, and if I'm not the right counselor for them, I, I let them know this, your students' mental health and emotional well-being is the most important thing to me. And, you know, it, it's finding a college is, is about finding where the student fits and the school that fits the student. And, and that's part of it as well. We do a ton of research. Um, I show the students how to be consumers of knowledge, the, uh, college costs, because most of them, they're 15, 17. They don't know, they shouldn't necessarily know yet, but they ought to know because I don't wanna see students going into debt. And, and so that's part of it. And then it's, you know, we roll right into the actually doing the applications, brainstorming essays. Um, you know, there are kids who have to write 20 plus essays. Wow. So it's, it's brainstorming those and then it's working them back and forth. Thank goodness for Google Docs. <laughs> it's, um, you know, lots and lots of edits, lots and lots of late night edits, <laughs> um, helping them I literally go through and fill out the application sometimes or checking them once they've done them and all the way through to acceptances and, and looking at financial aid packages, not a financial aid expert. I'm never going to tell you, you know, how to invest your money for college or, 
there are people who do that and people that I refer to, but pointing families in the right direction is, is something that that's part of what I do as well. And I love it. It's exhausting during this time of year because it gets very intense in the fall. Mm -hmm. And then I'm you know, in the spring, usually that's when um, you go and travel and visit colleges. And I had just done in, in January, right before everything shut down, I had done um, a counselor bus tour of Oregon schools. And we did like seven, yeah, <laughs> University of Oregon, Oregon State, Reed, Willamette, uh, Lewis and Clark, and a few others. And, and it was fabulous on a bus with a bunch of, you know, people who do just what I do. So it's probably like when you go to New Cage or something right. you know, that, that fits what you do. And it was amazing. And I was all set up to do more of that. And that's one thing I miss is that we miss that travel maybe next year. Right. So, well, again, yeah. that's part of the, it's also that, that connection with people. And, you know, when, whenever you can connect with a colleague too, who's someone who's, who's doing the same thing as you, there's yeah. the opportunity to learn from them and, and, uh, and just commiserate also and do all, all of that. Definitely. And it's so much easier to, be able to say to your student, oh my gosh, I can see you at that school because I was just there. Mm -hmm. you know, and I have two students that I worked with last year who are at least two who are at schools that I visited. And, and, and it was so really nice to be able to say, oh yeah, so-and-so, I can totally see you there. <laughs> and, and that's a really special thing. And so and it's always a little bit harder to say, yeah, I can see you at that school in, in Iowa that I never visited. You know, you have to do a different kind of due diligence to be able to feel like you can recommend that. So it's, it's interesting. It's, it's an interesting job because it's never the same twice. I never really get bored. It may get kind of like, oh, I just want to stop for the night, but it's always different. And that's what I liked about my jobs at the J as well. Yeah. They, they, you know, every day was yeah, that's definitely one of the things that attracted me about this work as well. I is bet. That, yeah, yeah if, you had mentioned um, encouraging um, the kids you work with uh, to, to pursue their passions and find out what they're passionate about. Um, what are you passionate about? What are the, what are the, you know, other than, you know, you, you work hard and you're doing, you know, amazing things, connecting people and, uh, and connecting these kids with, with their, their, the schools that are right for them. But, you know, what, what in your heart, um, what drives you? That's a, wow. You know, I think it's one of the things that, that we don't always think about, about ourselves. So besides everything that we've talked about, I have some interesting kind of hobbies that, that have, um, grown during this time. I, I am a, um, a pop culture kind of fanatic, but not like current pop culture, like old school pop culture. And if you look behind me, and it's kind of hard to tell, all those shelves back there are filled with mad magazines from, <laughs> from the, the mid 50s through the mid 70s. And wow. during this time, I have been... Um, kind of trolling out there on eBay. And I actually have a spreadsheet with <laughs> like the, the magazine editions. And I don't, I don't even know if I've told anybody, I think only Leslie knows that I've been doing this. <laughs> but I, I think the earliest one I have is from the first issue that went from like comic book size to magazine size in like 1956. And I think, I, I think the la last one I have were a couple that were actually from like the 2000s, but most of them are late 50s through mid 70s. I grew up reading Mad Magazine and collecting the books. And I love, you know, kind of satire and spoof and um, pop culture. You know, it's, I, we've been watching Mary Tyler, Mary Tyler Moore reruns, the only our reruns, every night before we go to bed, because it is the best way to get yourself <laughs> like just out of what's happening, like, you know, the things that you have to do every day in the craziness of, of the world is to go back and hang out with like 
Mary and Rhoda and Ted and, you know, Mr. Grant, we just got a new dog and I really wanted to name the dog Mr. Grant. Leslie wouldn't let me. <laughs> it so, used yeah. to be um, VH1, when, when, we, when people were, wouldn't stream individual shows, but they would actually watch a channel. Um, VH1 used to have a great uh, pop, it was a uh, pop culture. Yes. Pop culture pop up, trivia. Uh, pop up videos. Well, they had pop up videos, but they also had a pop a pop culture trivia game, which was like pop culture Jeopardy, which was um, I know oh. Mel spent. I, I, it was on for a few weeks, and it was just nonstop on on. <laughs> it. I miss VH1. Nice. That was a good one. Yeah, I just I you know that just takes me away, and and clears my mind and. If I really want to be able to, you know, get to sleep at night, I'll pick up a book of like TV trivia and, you know, ask me about something that, you know, happened in the 70s on Happy Days and I'll probably be able to tell you. Well, Don't awesome. ask me what I have for breakfast though. <laughs> <laughs> I choose Linda for my next trivia team. Uh, Very <laughs> next, time we, next time we have David Jacobson. Uh, right. A, a trivia night. As long as it's not geography or something like that. I, you know, <laughs> well, in, in the, uh, I, I'm sure you remember Trivial Pursuit. Sure. The game course. Trivial Pursuit. And in the early 80s, we played it all the time. And I, I was the queen of the pink triangle, but I could, or pie piece, but I, I just, it was the green was science. And I don't remember what color geography, I think it was blue. You don't want me on those. So if you can keep me with the pop culture, I'm good. But it has to have happened before 1986. Okay, we'll keep that. Oh, and I, I, Eric, I did have one bone to pick. Yeah. About LA, about LA sports and how happy fans are. I have um, no issue with the Dodgers, but I think that if you've followed me at all, you know that I am not a happy LA basketball fan. Right, you are a Clippers fan, right? Fan. Yeah. Uh, and the sparks too. Yeah, that's fair. that's something that Leslie and I are passionate about and love to go to, go to the games, and we really miss that. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I'm, a, I'm in just an LA homer, so I kind of like either either team that that's. And uh, I didn't have a problem latching onto the Lakers, I, although I'm a <laughs> Clippers fan too. But um, you know, yeah, it was it was a little disappointing, but you know, we will live to see another day. <laughs> or maybe right. another few decades or something like that. Well, basketball season starts in, in just a, I December think. 22nd. I right. know. So. <laughs> Crazy. I did enjoy the Dodgers and I'm a Met fan, but you know, it's been a long time. It, it's been, you know, very yeah. long time. 86 Mets. So yeah. I was going to say as a Met fan, you're sort of used to disappointment. So it's like, I'm there. I grew up disappointed. Yes. I, I was born disappointed. <laughs> And I always felt bad about rooting for the Dodgers because I always say they left my father. My father was a huge Brooklyn Dodger fan. Mine too, mine too. Yeah, and they left and I felt like, you know, I couldn't, I'd be disloyal. Mm. My father didn't go to another baseball game. So my parents moved from Brooklyn in 1965 uh, out to Los Angeles. And, and until my oldest sister said, daddy, can you take me to a baseball game? Which I think was... 1976 or 77 he wow go to a he didn't go to a baseball game so yeah they were very very upset all all, all the new york giant and brooklyn dodger fans were broken hearted yeah it's true i wrote that down though when you were talking about that i was taking notes and i i made a note about the clippers i made a note about um i know carol Lou is a great cook but i'm a really good takeout person and I made another note that Danny Ehrlich is amazing because I went on the Israel trip um, in 2018, I think. Yeah, 2018. And Danny was the um, was the guy, our guide, and his knowledge is amazing. He's a really good guy. So I just those were my three notes that I made when you were talking. <laughs> Thanks for the plug for Sunday's program. Yeah, and we've got absolutely. a lot of fans. You'll have to go back on Facebook and see all the wonderful comments that you've got a lot of friends and fans that are watching us today. Um, oh. Judy Blumenthal and Marion Martin and Cindy Luxemburg. Uh, lots of people who oh, are wow. happy to, to be sharing the afternoon with you. 
Oh, it's great. I, I have a wonderful time. I'm so happy to be here and be part of, you know, just everything Temple Israel. That's Got it. A, another, another um, from Lauren Kiriko, uh, another Mets fan. <laughs> All right, sorry, Lauren. <laughs> <laughs> That's funny. Lauren and I have talked about the Mets a lot over the years. <laughs> That's kind of sad, though. <laughs> Many years ago, my son was on um, was on the Mets Little League team, and I was in New York City with our eighth grade New York trip, and I wanted to get him a Mets hat or T-shirt or something. And I I didn't know my New York baseball regions. I just didn't know. I was in Manhattan, and every store I'm going into, I like I can't find anything related to the Mets, and I. I just didn't understand it. It was like all Yankees. I was like, where, where is all the Mets stuff? So finally, after like a long weekend of going into souvenir shops, I finally said to someone, how come I can't find a single Mets anything in Manhattan? And they said, oh, you know, lady, you're in the wrong, you're in the wrong borough. Did they tell you to go you know? to Queens? <laughs> yeah. So uh, yeah, and I think that someone was things. able to dig through some like dusty yeah. old, you know, back of a shelf and pull out one hat, which I brought home. <laughs> It's a lot like being a Clipper fan in LA. Got it. It's, you know, there is definitely like, there are a lot more Yankee fans. They've won a lot more World Series than the Mets have. So. And they've been around longer too. So, you know, what do you want? 60 years, you know, 100 years. It used to be great to go to, you, could, you used to be able to see all the, the other great teams come visit the Clippers and get great seats. Cause you could, cause they would sell out. So I, I, I actually, I, I saw Michael Jordan, his rookie year, come into town and, and play, play the Clippers because you wouldn't be able to get seats to watch him play the Lakers. So. No, and you know, the Clippers have sold out for years. I mean, they've been good. Now that, yeah, yeah. They, they just Last haven't, 10. you know, gotten, it's a chemistry thing. <laughs> that, that's my theory. <laughs> Sharon, I can't believe this hour is actually almost up. I know. We knew this one would go by quickly, Eric. <laughs> yeah. Um, Linda, for, I know you said, and you're, now you're going to have to go back and watch all the old episodes of our show. Um, but we conclude our show every week um, by asking a series of questions that were inspired by James Lipton from the Actors Studio. I don't know if you're... Ah. So I'm actually remember, glad I didn't know that. So I can be spontaneous. Right. That's right. So, so right. So at the end of his, uh, at the end of the show, he would ask actors a sort of a series of questions and all we want from you is exactly is, is just spontaneity and, and whatever comes to your mind. And, um, and I've weeded out the inappropriate ones that James used to. <laughs> uh, Thanks. So, so they're pretty straightforward and, and, uh, but, but we just, it's a nice way to, um, to get to know this side of our guests as well. So uh, here we go. We're going to finish up with this, okay? Okay. All right. So the first question is, what is your favorite word? My favorite word is community. And what is your least favorite word? Wow. Um, I would say my least favorite word is hate. And what sound or noise do you love? I love the sound of dog, dog toenails on the ground. <laughs> <laughs> what, you said you just got a dog. What kind of dog did you get? He is a um, Australian cattle dog slash border collie. And we did a foster to adopt. And our adoption day is this Monday. He's super smart, and his name was Oreo, but we were a Jewish or he, which means my light. So his name is Ori, my light. Okay. We look forward to seeing uh, seeing Ori at some point. As soon as he's official, I haven't posted. I know. Any I was saying I have not it. seen that on your social media. All right. I want it to be okay. official. <laughs> All right. Uh, the next question is, um, after that one, is what sound or noise do you hate? Or do you... The, the, the sound of a fork scratching across a plate. Ah. 
This is an interesting one for you because you do so many things, but what profession other than what you do would you like to attempt? I think if I, if I could do something, I'd, I'd want to write a memoir. Oh. I, I would like to be an author, but it would be nonfiction, my memoir. Very nice. And after doing everything that you do, what profession would you not like to do? What would I not like to do? Um, wow, what would I not like to do? I would, that's a hard one. I mean, there's a lot of things. That's why it's hard. Um, probably anything having to do with um, blood and guts or um, food prep. Wow, okay. <laughs> And the last question is, if heaven exists, what would you like to hear God say when you arrive at the pearly gates? I don't think I want him to say we've been waiting for you. <laughs> I, I think I would prefer if he or she said, what took you so long? Very good. <laughs> That's we'll great. We'll keep, I love you that. Here. we'll keep you here on earth as long as we can, Linda. That's for Thank sure. You. I appreciate that. <laughs> Thank you. Sharon, yeah, what took us so long to bring Linda on? I don't, I don't know. I don't know. I'm so glad. I'm so glad that we thought of the idea because it's been such a fun hour. It's always so much fun to hang out with Linda. Um, and you know, Linda, we didn't I even get to talk about like family camp and your your host talent show hosting and all those things. So <laughs> there's so many fun things about Linda. So if, if those of you who are viewing don't know Linda um, very well, uh, be sure to reach out to her or find her when we re resume to the temple because she's just so much fun and um, got a lot, lot to offer all of us. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for letting me be part of this. This has been a blast. I'm so glad you joined us. It's been really great. So, um, so what do we do at the end? Do we, do we say la hit rayot or how does this, what do we do? <laughs> we say hang on, we're going we're, we're to wrap up. We're just going to let so everybody know that. <laughs> um, so just a reminder for our guests that uh, at 5.15, um, Rabbi and Cantor are going to be leading a unity service tonight. Um, as we're all recovering from this election uh, time. And, uh, and then it'll be followed by the, the family service uh, at, at six o'clock. So um, we have a lot going on uh, this weekend and, and next week. And um, again, next week's guests are Kendra Kogert and Barry Kogert um, joining us on Anything Goes. And we're so happy that Linda joined us this week. And now we can all smile and have a great weekend. It, it makes it, uh, it's a great way to go into the weekend. I know I, know I feel energized and, and um, just really happy. So. Absolutely. Thank you to everyone too. who joined us on Facebook. We um, are so glad that you could hang out with us for the hour and get to know Linda a little bit better. And we wish you all a great Shabbat and weekend ahead. So, thanks again, everyone. Thank, Thank you. you. Take care. Bye. Shabbat shalom. Shabbat shalom.